uh, in this next notebook, we'll be looking at continuous multi-fidelity optimization. And uh, fidelity referring to the quality of an experiment. And when you, uh, let's take an example of the simulation. We, we just talked about the finite element simulations. Uh, and with those, as you increase the resolution of a simulation, typically the quality of the results uh, will also improve <clears throat> at an increased uh, computational cost for that. Uh, and so there are algorithms designed to uh, help use some of the lower fidelity uh, approximations, these cheaper approximations that are subject to new, more noise, more bias, and use those to eff efficiently and effectively uh, discover the optimal candidate um, at the high fidelity at a reduced overall cost. So in this first notebook, I'm going to show you how to use multi-fidelity optimization in the service API. And in the next notebook, I'll do I'll show it in Bowtorch with a lot of the lower level components and go into more details there. Uh, this notebook comes from a self-driving laboratory demonstration geared towards uh, teaching autonomous scientific discovery uh, with principles of real tasks, but using just some simple red, green, blue LEDs and a light sensor. Uh, so uh, again, uh, I'm just going to be going over uh, uh, kind of some basics here of implementing it, but not necessarily talking a lot about uh, the actual uh, experiment that's being run here. But I will just say that there's an integration time uh, that's controlled by a few different parameters. And as the integration time for the sensor increases, the fidelity of those sensor readings also increase. Uh, but it also takes more time, so it's, there's a higher cost associated with it. Uh, so uh, first, we'll take a look at uh, making the parameters. And the main difference here uh, is that uh, in addition to a name, type, uh, and bounds for your parameter, you're also going to add this is fidelity equals true to it, as well as a target value. Uh, the target value being when you optimize this at the final value, what should that value be? In this case, it's the lar one of the larger integration times. Um, and then the other parameters uh, are uh, just kind of as normal. They have name, type, and bounds uh, for those. And then when we actually define, uh, so we have our evaluate function, and uh, here is where we specify the a custom generation strategy. Now there's a really great uh, set of documentation, um, a, a documentation page on generation strategies and using custom generation strategies in the X documentation. Uh, here we'll say that the first step, uh, the first model that we'll use or generation step will be the uh, quasi-random Sobel search. And then we'll use models.gpkg uh, or Gaussian process knowledge gradient. Um, and we'll pass this generation strategy into the Axe client here using the generation strategy keyword argument. Uh, from there, uh, the simulation essentially goes as normal. Uh, and uh, running it, we get our uh, our optimization with the fidelity parameters. So in that previous notebook, we took a look, a very quick overview of uh, using the service API with the knowledge gradient model. Um, and in this one, we'll dig into some more of the details uh, going to Bo Bowtorch, which is uh, the back end of Axe. Uh, so here we go. Uh, some of this will be new. Uh, you know, we had the loop API, the service API. We touched a bit on the developer API. And this, moving into the Bowtorch framework, uh, is even lower level building blocks. Um, so uh, and if you want to learn more about some of the math involved with the multi-fidelity knowledge gradient. Um, you can take a look at uh, some of these papers here. Uh, 
So we'll um, have our variables take on a torch.double type. We'll use a GPU if there's one available. Otherwise, we'll uh, use the CPU. Uh, we can mostly ignore the smoke test, uh, basically, whether we're running a very quick test to make sure it runs without errors or we're doing something a little, a little bit heavier duty to actually compare results on things. Uh, now, for this problem, uh, the developers created an augmented Hartman uh, function where the uh, there's an additional dimension that is the fidelity parameter. Uh, so we have our normal input parameter space, uh, six-dimensional uh, x going from 0 to 1, and then this extra parameter s uh, where we say the target fidelity is 1, that is the highest fidelity and the most costly. Uh, and the goal of the problem is to maximize f of x comma 1.0 by making use of the cheaper evaluations where s is less than 1. Uh, and then there's some cost function associated with these fidelities. Uh, if you So in terms of cost, this could be like computational cost. So if you know uh, ahead of time how the computational cost or the experimental cost, this could be in terms of money or time or some way that you quantify the resource cost involved, uh, is that uh, you can encode that, uh, that cost into the problem itself. Here, uh, they're saying that uh, any experiment will have a fixed cost of 5.0, and then uh, if you use higher fidelity, uh, you'll add the fidelity on. Um, so it's sort of like a just a line with an inter intercept of 5.0. Uh, so we'll define or we'll instantiate our augmented Hartman class. And this would be like your real objective function. Uh, we will initialize the model and we'll use a single task multi fidelity GP model. Uh, make some helper functions for generating initial data and initializing uh, the model. So here uh, we're literally just doing some random uh, sampling. Uh, to get uh, training x values and then evaluate it on training objectives. This could have been a solo sampling. Uh, and then we'll uh, create the model and uh, return this marginal log likelihood uh, that gets used to uh, help with optimizing uh, the model. So, uh, we have the model instantiated, and we also need uh, a way to evaluate the acquisition function. So we have a cost-aware utility and an inverse cost-weighted utility. Uh, this will help us to uh, define the cost, uh, and then we'll have a way to uh, do something very simple uh, where we just set the parameters, the fidelity parameters to the target fidelity. Um, and uh, in the final stage, once we've acquired the number of trials that uh, however many trials we've wanted, or we've run out of the resources uh, that were available, uh, we want to uh, make oh, this one shot prediction uh, by fixing the fidelity <laughs> parameter to the target fidelity uh, and uh, performing the, the optimization of the acquisition function uh, using that fixed feature. Um, so we have our bounds. Uh, we have the target fidelity as the seventh uh, parameter with the target value of 1.0. We have our cost model. Uh, and we'll say that, again, the fixed cost is 5.0. And then uh, when you have multiple fidelities, you can have weights for each of those fidelities. And with the knowledge gradient function, uh, the acquisition function uh, is an optimization of the ratio of utility uh, to the cost. Um, and so we get that via this 
inverse cost weighted utility. Uh, so essentially part of the acquisition function there. Uh, and if needed, uh, you could define your own uh, using uh, kind of this as a, as a template for that, um, but we'll use the, the default for now. Then we'll also have a fixed feature acquisition function uh, that uses the posterior mean of the model, uh, fixes the sixth, or sorry, the seventh uh, column, uh, starting from zero to six, so six being the seventh column, uh, to the value of one for the current uh, value of the acquisition function. And then as we optimize it, uh, we'll establish some bounds uh, for the acquisition function uh, from earlier and use a certain number of restarts. Uh, and uh, yeah, so doing a multi-start acquisition function optimization uh, and the number of samples to use for this optimization. So uh, what gets hidden in the loop and the service APIs uh gets exposed here in Botorch where you have optimization happening within the overall uh Bayesian optimization. And uh because uh computationally we have finite resources to determine the maximum uh of the acquisition function. And so we do that uh using you know different sci-fi tools uh to run these these sub optimizations. And then finally, we'll return our multi-fidelity knowledge gradient uh, one-shot optimization model or uh, class based on uh, the model that we have. Uh, here, the uh, number of fantasy points, essentially all you need to know about this is as you use more, you get a better approximation, but it takes more memory and longer to run. So have a current value and uh, our cost aware utility that we defined earlier, as well as a way to uh, move from whatever fidelity we're at and fix it to the target fidelity uh, that we're going for. And finally, we have the Bayesian optimization step uh, where we'll uh, have this helper function that optimizes our acquisition function and returns the observation uh, for that step. So we get some initial conditions uh, to use for sampling. We uh, optimize, uh, do the sub-optimization based on those initial conditions. We have uh, four candidates that get generated. We'll compute the total cost across the four candidates. Uh, get our parameter values, evaluate our objectives on each of those, uh, and return the parameters, the objectives, and the total cost. Uh, next, as we start the actual iterations of the multi-fidelity Bayesian optimization using the helper functions that have been defined earlier, we generate our initial data. Uh, we then start looping through uh, initializing the model uh, uh, getting our uh, acquisition function, optimizing the acquisition function and returning those suggested candidates, the objective values and the total cost, uh, and then tracking a running sum of the, the cumulative cost. So now that we've run uh, our optimization for the specified number of iterations, and because Usually we don't have as many observations of the function at the target fidelity, the most costly. Uh, we want to use a recommendation function that uh, gives us a prediction with the fidelity fixed to the target one. So we use this fixed feature acquisition function uh, with um, the seventh variable fixed to the value of one. That's our fidelity parameter fixed to our target value. Uh, we uh, optimize the acquisition function uh, to get our final recommendation 
and then compute the objective value uh, at the highest fidelity and return that value there. Um, and so here we have the recommended point, our objective value, and the total cost associated with getting to that point. Um, and here we were doing a maximization of the negated augmented Hartman 6 or Hartman function. Uh, and so higher values are better here uh, and lower total costs are better. Uh, then we have a comparison to standard expected improvement where we always use the target fidelity. Uh, and it's not a very rigorous comparison because it's just looking at a single trial, which keeps the computational requirements uh, fairly low. Um, since these multi-fidelity algorithms can be expensive to optimize uh, internally. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, skip ahead here to essentially just uh, the results of using expected improvement. And we see that we get a lower uh, objective value, something that's worse, for actually a higher total cost. Um, so in this case, uh, using the multi-fidelity model uh, helped us to be more efficient in terms of minimizing the total cost relative to uh, just the, the standard model. So in that notebook, we looked at using cheap approximations to reduce the total cost of running an optimization. Uh, here are some other examples where we see this implementation of multi-fidelity optimization uh, here in the Dragonfly framework, and a scalable Bayesian optimization technique um, and, and uh, Python package that you're seeing uh, reduced errors as a function of the cost, or in this case, the wall clock time.